What's up everyone, Mattis Faction here. Today we're going to check out this High Water Knives Estuary. Uh, if you want to skip all the boring crap, should you get this knife? In my opinion, yes. To find out why, keep listening. Uh, this knife is the estuary, as I just said. It was designed by a guy who uh, worked on the engines for the F-22 Raptor. And you know, he did that for a while. Started designing some laparoscopic tools. And then he settled on knife making, which he says is his true passion. All this is uh, from his, in his website, by the way. And uh, this is a $300 knife. Um, that's it's it's milled. Look at the blade. You got those cool lines through it. And then he hand finishes and hand assembles himself all in his garage. He does all of this in his garage. So this is essentially uh, just a handmade knife by just some guy in his garage. And he named it the Estuary, which uh, means. <coughs> <clears throat> the end of a river's journey, but the start of a beginning, which start of a beginning is the beginning. It's where the water meets the ocean. Uh, but, I don't know, I think this is his, his journey into the depths to see just where it'll take him. And I believe this is his first design. I mean, he's probably had prototypes, but this is his first design he sold. And uh, uh, it's, I, I love it. It's it's a, got a cool, unique design. So let's get some specs out of the way. It doesn't say it on the blade that I have found anywhere. I bought this off of a friend, by the way. Uh, but this is, if it's according to the website, CPM 154, CNC machine, and hardened to 5859. The pivot is 440C caged axial bearings. The lock is a 440C button lock. The handles are 6061 T6 aluminum type 3 hard coat anodized. Hardware is stainless hardware. And it's a tip up clip. And it weighs just under 4 ounces. All those specs are on the website. But I gotta say, when you get it in hand, <coughs> it's definitely comfortable. You, you feel these little ripples through the scales. Adds a nice grip. Uh, the the cutting on it is amazing, super sharp. These lines are, you know, 3D. They're textured, but they don't hinder the cutting ability at all. They're nice and smooth. So. Anything you cut, just going to ride up on it. The The button's awesome. There is a tiniest little bit of lock stick in mine, button lock stick. But with, uh, with use and lots of fiddling, it'll go away. Button lock is pretty much bound to happen in almost all. But, yeah, this, this is such... A cool knife and the fact that it's you know designed and made by just one guy and made in his garage and then he sells them in batches for three hundred dollars <coughs> I mean that's amazing you're getting a an awesome American made knife supporting a small business for an awesome deal on a knife three hundred bucks I got I got a couple of nitpicks which I'll talk about but I mean, it's his first knife. But the, the biggest one I have is this pocket clip for me is a little unusable. It's so stiff. And I don't know if they all are. It's just this one in particular is really stiff. And it's such a long pocket clip. I don't know if you need one that long, but I don't know. I haven't really been able to use it just because I have to cram it on my pocket. Did you just say cram it? But it is reversible. I bet if I found like a cool like titanium clip to put on there, it might look good. But I haven't bothered with that yet. 
It, it just... I could do the penny trick to try to stretch it out. Which I have, actually. I have done the pennies on this. And it's still pretty tight. But, you know, that's just one thing. But I don't feel the, the clip when I hold it. <coughs> that's one thing. Sometimes when you get a clip, especially when it sticks out a little bit, it might dig in your palm. So maybe if it was a little shorter, you'd feel it. But with it being that the length that it is, it goes just beyond where normal clips go. So maybe that's why you don't feel it. But it's very comfortable in hand. There's his logo, by the way. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, there's his logo. Got a good look at that blade. I like these uh, clip screws. See, they look pretty neat. There's the other side with the button. So it's a metal button. You can see it plunge in there. And it is a flipper. The flipper's a little stiff just because of the button. But what I like is, uh, as you can see on the scales, he uh, widens it up right here. So when you flip it, your finger has a nice place to lay in, nice and smooth. It just goes right in those dimples. And then also, when you put your thumb there, since it's opened up a little bit, it gives you a little bit more place for your thumb pad. And it feels good. I, I like that design right there. And with the blade being up high, because sometimes, or most times, the blade was will usually line up at the bottom. But you can get your finger there to choke up if you want. Just be careful, because you can get your finger on the blade. But, you know, if you like choking up on a knife, this is capable of it. But let's do some size comparisons. I'll use this, uh, this hunk of scrap right here. That one's pretty cool, I guess, if you're if you're into that kind of thing. What's another knife I have? I don't even know what I have. Oh, here's the uh O knife Century R1. <laughs> I mean that's just a that's just a big boy. Um what else do I got? Oh yeah, the uh Osborne. Oops. Put the Osborne right there. I'd say it looks pretty good. This is becoming one of my favorite knives. Although, I need to do a video on that because that's pretty fun. But this is becoming one of my favorite knives. I, I really like the way it feels. I like the way it cuts. I like the way it handles itself. The aluminum feels good. It's not too slick. But, I mean, maybe if you got it wet, it would definitely be slippery. But you could use it with gloves just fine. It feels good. This this uh, These grooves... They're 3D textured. <coughs> they definitely give you some grip. I like when you use a metal scale if that you give it some character. It's not just a, a slab of metal. So the waves are pretty neat. I like that the flipper tab doesn't protrude too far. It's got a a very cool rounded shape to it, a little semicircle, and then does it over here. Gives you a place for your finger, a little finger guard. There's no jimping on it. That was my other uh, other nitpick that I would do. I would just put a little bit of jimping right there, because sometimes when you do this a lot, your finger starts to hurt, because it slides off sometimes. And this is kind of a sharp little corner right there. But like I said, that's that's a that's kind of a minor nitpick because you could just button button lock it all day. But this is a really cool, fun knife. I like the way he designed it. Kind of want to take it apart, see what's inside. You know what? Maybe I will stand by. All right, I'm back. I got my Coca-Cola can. De caffeine chocolate. But I use this to hold the parts. And then I got one of my good screws. Which one do I got? Ooh, brass today. Nice. So let's see. This pivot kind of looks bigger than an eight, but let's, uh, let's take a look. What size did I just grab? T3. 
ten. I knew it. And then these look like those could be eights. What size did I just grab? T nine? No. T eight. Oh, are they smaller? Oh, it could be T sixes. All right, what size did I just grab? T seven. What size did I just grab? T six. Yeah. Okay. Let's take this sucker apart. Let's see what we got. What are we working with here? Let's start with the old pocket clip. All right, there's two. Do 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 do. I wonder if one is longer than the other. I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. Nope, they're the same. All right, we'll do the pivot while we're here. Hopefully it's not a... Oh, it kind of is. Ugh. Maybe if I hold it. It's kind of coming out. But it's wanting to spin on me. Use my thumbnail to stop it. There we go. That seems to be doing a trick. Ooh. What kind of uh, pivot is this bad boy? Doesn't seem to be coming out any further than that. Okay, let's uh, let's start loosening this bad boy up then. So two screws. Okay, so this is just a barrel then. Maybe I can... Oh, it's not long enough. I'll leave it there. Let's see what happens. I'll leave it like that. We'll start taking apart these other little guys. On this side, it's just the just the one. Which is the stop pin. Alright, hopefully, keep your finger on the button. Oh, it's still holding tight, huh? Oh, oh. I gotta do all the screws. The barrel, there's none on this side, but you can tell it screws in. Alright, I like learning as I go. Here we go, got these. Two right here. They're pretty loose. Get this other stop pin one. Is it loose enough? Or this side's moving, but that pivot. I need to be able to. I need to get that pivot out. There we go. There we go. Yeah, it is a pretty big uh, little pin right there. That's cool. I felt the button release a little over there. That's why I keep it face down. But there is still the matter of the spring in there. Does this still need to be loose? No. It just doesn't want to give up the ghost, as it were. Maybe I'll leave it like that so that the, the button doesn't come springing out, but let's see if I could swivel it. No, because it'll break the... Yeah, I'm an idiot. That'll break the button. Alright, I kind of want to see what's in there, so we're going for it. Maybe. Line these back up. Come on. Come on. There we go. There's the spring. There's some bearings right there. We'll probably clean that up a little bit too. But look at that solid slabs of aluminum. And they're threaded. These are threaded. I wonder what goes on there. I wonder what's up with that. But look at the blade. You could definitely see some cool 
cutout shapes to it. Definitely looks pretty neat. That's where the button sits right there. Let's see, do I have a cleansing cloth nearby? No, of course not. I mean, why would I? That would be way too easy. Way too easy if I just had one casually chilling. Maybe one of these random pouches. No, no, again, too easy. Too easy. One second. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right. Clean this little schmutz off. Get in there. Get this side. Get it nice and clean. I like a clean knife. <clears throat> so the easy part is taking apart a knife. Hard part's putting them back together. But it goes on like this. And it folds in. This the rides on the, the barrel. Wherever I put it. Somewhere. And then the button stick right there. Goes there and then it seats once that button falls into that little dip right there. So that's basically how that works. So we can put these bearings into this little cloth. Clean it up. I mean that side looks pretty good, so I'll just put that there. I don't want to lose that spring. Get these. I wonder if I could slap some, I mean, it's button locks, so it doesn't really matter, but slap some skiffs in here of some kind. Are these two different kinds of bearings? No, nope. okay. So what I like to do is they're open on one end. I like to put the open end away from the blade. That way the blade sits on this nice clean side. I'm going to drop my hops number nine on a couple of these balls. Get in there. Got a little bit of grease from the other oil that was probably in there. Here's the button, by the way. Definitely machines these in there, too. Spring sits right in there, and then the button goes down like that. Cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. All right. So the blade's going to sit like that. Now, where is the big old barrel? There it is. Let's get that cleaned off. Let's get that cleaned off. I'm going to put this on this side. Oops. Maybe. Alright, this is the hard part. Does it go on this side? It should. It should go on this side. Right? Maybe. I don't remember. Maybe it goes on this side. No, it doesn't go on this. It goes on this side. I just gotta cram it in there. That's what she said. Also, I put the bearings on. There we go. All right, we just gotta do this. The to... yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it just didn't line it up properly. This is the first time. And what I like to do is because the blade swirls around that i just put a little bit on there just because does it help anything i don't know but i have oil and i'm gonna use it there we go so i'm gonna put that there i'm gonna grab this blade by the sharp end i'm gonna put that there And line it up so that the stop pin and the button go right there. 
There we go. Line that up. La da 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 da. There we go. That goes there. There we go. We got the barrel spacers that need to go in. Get the button lined up. This is the hard part. When you have like buttons and stuff, there's more to uh, there's more to line up. Get those out of the way for now. Do my best not to slice my finger pads off. My finger pads off. Why aren't you lining up? Okay, that's how you're supposed to go. That's how you're supposed to go. There we go. On this channel, you're going to see it all. The struggles, the successes. It is what it is. You can fast forward. But sometimes you got to see just how much a person struggles. Taking apart a knife. Putting it back together. Sometimes it, uh... It's not that easy. You kind of have to let a few words fly and it just, it is what it is. Get these together. I feel the bottom one spinning still. Yeah, just getting that button to line up. Sometimes you can use a tool. Come on. Flatten up. Flatten up. Let's go. Go to your hole. Go to your hole. Let's see. This guy makes these in batches, so he does this all the time. I'm doing it just the once. But you don't get good unless you do it a bunch of times. So maybe I'll do it more than once. This time is a struggle because it's my first time. But try number three might take me two minutes. It's just lining up that dang old dang button. There we go. Whew. It's just lining that button up. That's all it is. And I can feel this one spinning. But if I hold it, if I hold it, get my thumb in there again. My nail. Oh, you can see it tearing up my thumb. Maybe if I do this side. Nope. Oh. Okay, so that's a T, do we say T10? T10, do I have another one? What size is this? T15, that might be a little too big. Just maybe. Just maybe. And there's no T's there. So, one second. Okay, I managed to get it. All I did was I popped the blade, and then it, it fell into place. It fell into place. So I tightened it up a little bit. Let's get these, uh, let's get these, uh, uh, whatchamahoosits in there. And then I'll work on them barrel spacer pieces. Anyway, so sometimes when I do these take aparts, tear downs, and put some becks togethers, I like to ask, how you doing? How you feeling? What's going on in your life? Are you interested in buying like a like a knife from just some guy who's hand making them in his garage? Is that something you might be interested in? Oh, 
line that up. Ooh, ooh, almost lost it. Come on, line that up. Put that. Unfortunately, because these don't go all the way through, you can't you can't really see through the spacers. So you can only just kind of line it up the best you can. I had it. I had it until I rotated it too much. Get rotated. Killer tofu. There we go. Yeah, that that one did it. There we go. I won't tighten it too much because I need to get the other one in. Ooh, ooh. There's the second one. Gonna kind of give it a little pushy push. And we got contact. Get those in there. Tighten these bad boys up. So I like to take apart knives just so I could clean it. But also I like to know how things work. So I, I wanted to see, since this guy CNC's it himself, how he does it and what it looks like what maybe sometimes you can figure out their their thinking process what is this guy thinking how's he feeling let's get these big old t10 pocket screws on there there's one before you tighten it Get the other one so that it's lined up just nice. It's a very nice. There we go. So now we can tighten these up. There we go. Tighten, tighten, tighten. 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 Let's feel the button. So the, it's off to the side a little bit, so we're going to need to do some adjustments. There we go. See how it kind of pulled it? You can feel it getting a little tight. But let's see how it works. It's definitely, uh, definitely got a little bit more spring in its step now. But there, we t t checked out this knife, we took it apart, we put it back together. It's still got a little button stick, but eh, that's the thing with button locks. It's going to be there on almost 98% of the knives. Uh, he designed this knife for lefties and righties. It's a cool knife, it cuts great. It's got a neat blade style. It's a, definitely a Tonto. But he rounded this corner, which I think is going to do a lot of people a favor. Because when you have a straight corner, people round it off anyway. It starts out skinny, kind of flares up a little bit, give it some strength right here. And it's a nice thick stock, so it's got some strength behind it. But man, yeah, this thing, this thing is cool. And it's, you know, American made. 300 bucks. It's awesome. I, I do, I do recommend this one right here. I do. I think, I, I've been carrying it. I've had this thing for about a month now. Just carrying it, checking it out. And uh, I think I could full-heartedly say, Yes. So definitely check it out. Let me know what you think. If you want to see like a more thorough review, there's other channels that have done it. This is more of a checking it out, taking it apart. I wanted to see its insides. That's pretty cool. I, I definitely dig it. 
I definitely dig it. But, yeah, that's all I got for you. So, I hope you have a great day, and uh, I'll catch you next time.